Hi everyone, it's Mr. Wing. The purpose of this video is to help you begin understanding the importance of being organized when it comes to beginning a student on trumpet. As you found out by now, there's a lot of things to think about when you play a musical instrument. So when teaching a beginner, we want to have fun. You want to make sure that they understand that you are just as excited to help them learn how to play trumpet as they are wanting to learn how to play trumpet. So you must be organized. The following points is what I expect you to be able to demonstrate in the teaching practicum exam when you teach one of your fellow students how to play trumpet. You must be organized. The first thing I want to see is how you teach them to open the case. As we've discussed, most cases have some type of a identifying logo, sticker, emblem on it that usually will indicate that that is the top of the case. You want to teach your students to put the case on the floor upright, unlatch it in whatever manner it, it's latched, and to be able to open the case ever so gently with the trumpet inside it. You're going to want to teach them how to get the trumpet out of the case and hold the trumpet. As we know, you hold the trumpet with the left hand. You grip it. That is how you hold the trumpet. On student trumpets, as the one you have, it has a adjustable third valve slide ring finger. So you, you may want to unloosen that and if you have small hands you're going to want to bring it closer so it's, it fits nicely and if the student has a large hand you're probably going to want to have them move that out a little bit so they can hold the horn comfortably so it doesn't slip out of their hands. We don't want that to happen. So the primary horn, the primary hand in holding the trumpet is the left hand. We want to teach them that the right hand is for moving the buttons up and down. The thumb should rest nicely between the first and second valve, like I have here. Make it like a little C with your fingers and just allow the fingers to drop. The first index finger goes over the first valve. The middle finger over the second valve. The third finger for the third valve. And the little pinky, as we've discussed, the only reason that they have a, a little pinky finger ring is for balance. So that if you need to hold the horn with the, with the right hand, you can do so relatively easy without having the horn fall. So that you can insert a mute, if you will, or have the student play and turn a page. So the right pinky is for balance only. We, I don't advocate putting your finger in there, because sometimes putting your finger in there slows down the third valve. So teach them to hold the horn correctly. You've opened the case, they've got the horn out, now you want to teach them how to put the mouthpiece in. As we discussed earlier in the class, you take the mouthpiece, you put it in, and you turn it while pushing in until it seats itself. I can bang on the mouthpiece pretty, pretty heavily, and I'll always be able to get the mouthpiece unstuck because of the way we twisted it. If I were to put the mouthpiece in like that and then bang on it, the mouthpiece would seat itself down in the receiver and it would be quite difficult to remove it. So, teach them how to hold the horn, teach the student how to put the mouthpiece in correctly. It's very, very important. The student really doesn't understand all the parts of the trumpet. So the next thing you're gonna, gonna do briefly is be able to identify the parts. We, they've just seen the mouthpiece. This is the lead pipe. This is the tuning slide that goes out and in to adjust the pitch. The water key to empty out the water and some of the saliva that may be into it, often referred to as a spit valve. They have the bell. Teach them to take care of the horn. So I see so many dents and bells. And when you get one in, it's hard to get it out. So teach them how to take care of their bell. It's very, very delicate. You have the valve slides. There are three valves, which has a first valve slide, a second valve slide, and a third valve slide. So the parts of the trumpet consist of mouthpiece, receiver, tuning slide, bell, valve section, and slides. You're going to want to spend a little bit of time with them, talking with them about how a sound is produced. Or what happens when you push the valves down? Let's go back to that one. How, what happens when you push the valves down? Students don't understand that inside the valve there are holes, and these holes are called ports. 
when and there's an upstroke of the valve and there's a downstroke of the valve. When it's upstroke, it lines itself up with, 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 with these slides here mainly. And when it's downstroke, it lines itself up with the corresponding valve slide itself. Let me put this back in and we'll go on. Good, I got it in right the first time. Lucky me. So, we've identified pretty much the, the, uh, the parts of the trumpet. We've identified a little bit what happens when you push the valves down. Now, here comes the fun part. You get the tap on your mouthpiece. You have to be able to explain to the student a little bit what happens when you push down the valves, but also correlated with how a sound is produced. We know that when you tap on the mouthpiece, you're going to hear a sound come out the bell. That's a pedal C. Second valve, pedal B on trumpet notes. First valve, B flat. A, two and three, A and flat. One and three, G and one, two, three, F sharp or G flat. So it's kind of fun. Now how in the world did that happen? We know that the sound is already in the instrument and all you do is take a big breath and blow it out, or so it seems. The breath is so, so very important with producing a sound. What I teach my students is that if the sound is in the horn as demonstrated by blow, tapping on the end of the mouthpiece, we now have to make sure that the student understands that it takes a tremendous amount of breath and how to form an armature to really get that air through to be able to activate the molecules inside the horn to be able to make the trumpet sound possible. So, a lot of times in forming the armature, I'll teach the student just to watch me. More is caught than taught. Sometimes I don't say hardly anything in a beginning uh, in the beginning lesson. I want the student to watch how I breathe. I want the student to watch how I hold the horn. They'll pick up. But if someone were to ask me to get the best sound out of the mouthpiece I can get, this is it. The way I was taught to play a trumpet and the way I teach here at Moorhead is that the air activates the molecular activity within the horn, which sets up a longitudinal wave, standing wave, and the bugles and the harmonic series allow the notes to come out, but most importantly, the air is where it all starts. Whether a student is taught to buzz their lips in producing the sound, or whether they're not, it's very, very important that I, I feel that most of the problems that I see in trumpet today is that most embouchures are too tight. They're, they're so restricting the air that the sounds are puny, they're, they're nasally, they're pinched. Students don't have any registers, students don't have any endurance. The sounds are just unbelievable to listen to. So I'm trying to help you understand that when you teach your students how to play, teach them the, effi the efficiency of blowing through the instrument with a copious amounts of breath. <sighs> and a lot of the problems will disappear that they're having because the breath does some interesting things to allowing the position of an embouchure to take place. You see, we have these things called buccinators. The buccinators are your spit muscles, or let's assume you got a piece of paper on the end of your tongue and you spit it off right by spitting it off is activated these muscles. You haven't taught the student how to form an embouchure really at all. So we know that the embouchure is nothing more than a receiver for the air going through the mouthpiece, igniting the, uh, activating the molecules in the horn. So we devised a thing called blowing the pipe. Mr. Adam at Indiana University, Bill Adam at Indiana University came up with this probably 50 years ago. And he says, okay, we know that sometimes the embouchure is too restricted. What can we do to help relax that embouchure a little bit so that the air goes through and the, and the embouchure remains more resilient and will vibrate sympathetic with the air going through it and the molecular activity that takes place. So he came up with a, with a, with a thing called blowing the pipe. You take the tuning slide out and just like producing the sound on a mute, if, if you have a mute or a pop bottle or anything like that, and you want to get a sound out of it, what do you do? You take a breath and you blow right over. Now in blowing over the mute, it activates the molecules inside the mute. If this was a bigger mute, the pitch would be lower. 
If it was a smaller butte, the pitch would be higher. Just like a chime, just like a xylophone, just like piano strings. The small strings produce the high pitches. The small bars on a xylophone or a chime produce the high pitches. The big strings, the big pipes, the big bars produce the low pitches. That's pretty much basic physics. On a B-flat trumpet, you have a tuning slide. Uh, excuse me, you have a lead pipe. This lead pipe is about the about so, you know so long. Most of them are about the same, but this particular pipe is a contra D flat. If it was a shorter pipe, the pitch would be higher. If it was a longer lead pipe, the pitch would be lower. So all we're trying to do is teach the student to get the air through the tube, period. As a result, in modeling, you, I do it, the student does it, you do it, the student does it, you do it, the student does it, they're going to catch on. They're going to watch the way you breathe. Breathing should be natural. Take a big natural breath and leave it alone. Don't hesitate it on the way up, though. <sighs> the speed of the breath determines a lot of things. So you must teach your students to take a full natural breath, full natural breath in and out. Let me do that again. The breath activates the molecules in the tube and the pitch is caused by the length of the tube. That is how a sound is produced on a brass instrument. So we call that blowing the pipe. The purpose of blowing the pipe is to get the air through the tube, to get the resilience of the lip kind of warmed up, to get the body kind of limbered up and take a big breath and blow, and to help sustain the pitch and give the students something to listen to without thinking about a lot of other stuff. So we're trying to keep it simple. Take a big breath, we teach the student how to blow the pipe. <sighs> I can tell a lot when the students blow the pipe. I can tell if there's any restriction in the air. I can tell if the if the I can tell if the breath is going to the top of the mouthpiece or the bottom of the mouthpiece. But it's interesting. How can I tell? Because if the air is going through the, the, the lead pipe like it should, that E flat will be very, very resonant and free. If there's any fluctuation in it, that may, that means there's either tension in the embouchure or tension in the breath, and we, we have to have that, that worked out. Over repeti uh, repet through repetition is what I'm trying to say. So it's kind of important, blowing the pipe. After you blow the pipe four or five times with the student, get the air going, and if, if they're blowing low, a lot of times the student will pick it up, and this is what will happen. They're blowing too hard. More, more energy than necessary to activate the molecule is in the place. So you just have them relax it. If you have them relaxing, it'll usually come into play. It'll really scare them because the sound will bark out just like this. If the pitch is low, that means that the air is not going through like it should. So you can have them blow in a piece of, in a blow in their hand, if you will, pretend like it's a bullseye, and blow through. That often helps too. Any visualization that you can give the student takes the mind off of them and into the goal and the be being goal oriented is what we want to do. So after you have them blow the trumpet, uh, the lead pipe for a while, have them put the tuning slide back in. The tuning slide at the bottom is slightly lo longer than the tuning slide at the top. So make sure you put the bottom one in first, line it up with the top, and it usually goes in pretty easy. When that, you're ready to produce the first sound on trumpet is the sound that I like to teach them first. I don't teach my beginning trumpet students that G is open and F sharp is second and F is first. I teach them oral skills to try to hear the sound from day one. So I want them to blow through the trumpet just like they blew through the pipe, hearing a G and interesting things usually happen on the first time. I'll do the same thing with the mouthpiece that I'm going to blow and obviously I'm going to be thinking of a G. One 
more time. The air is activating the molecules inside the trumpet. I'm thinking of the pitch, out comes the pitch. So, with your teaching practicum, these are the 11 points that I need you to really pay attention to. Number one, open the case. Number two, how to hold the trumpet. Number three, how to insert the mouthpiece into the trumpet so it doesn't get stuck. Number four, help the student identify parts of the trumpet. Number five, what happens when you push down the valves? Number six, how do you produce the sound? Use a straight mute. You use some kind of uh, analogy, if you will, keeping it simple, of air activating molecules. Um, teach them how to form an embouchure. It could be nothing more than say, hmm, or don't say a word and just show them. <sighs> Number eight, teach them how to take a big relaxed breath. The better, the bigger the breath, the better. Most of the time we're lazy. We don't breathe as deeply as we should. Number nine, get in the air through the mouthpiece. Number 10, teach them how to get the air through the mouthpiece and ignite the molecules in the lead pipe, teach them how to blow the pipe with a sustained sound. And then put it all together, have them put in a tuning slide, take a big breath, sink up a pitch, nah, and blow right through the trumpet, getting the student how to produce their first sound. And the rest, it's just an evolution of things that take place. Our Teaching a beginning student has to be methodical. It has to be precise. And, but there's there's no there's no no there's repetition in learning. Through learning, there's repetition, and in repetition, there's learning. So keep at it. These are the things that I would like to see you do in the teaching practicum. You're going to have 10 minutes to show me these 11 points. Be methodical. Be prepared. And I hope this helps you. Thanks a lot. Bye.